So tonight I will yield to Prophetess Nabina, whose hand is up, lest I get whooped. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, Dr. <clears throat> Amen. Good evening, man of God. Good evening. Good Good evening. evening. Um, thank you so much, man of God. Actually, I just want to, you know, um, you know, thank you for this teaching for the past three weeks. Um, being a leader myself, you know, it was very insightful. Uh, you know, it was quite interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, tonight I sat down, as Prophet said, and, you know, I, I searched myself. Um, I search my heart, and it's it's a difficult road, you know, when you're called um, as a leader to just totally, you know, surrender to God and to, you know, you you have people with reprobate mindset, you have people with different nature and characteristics that are anti-Christ, and mm -hmm. you have to reflect Christ in all that you do. And that can be difficult. Not that not surrendering to Christ is difficult, but you know, just surrendering and allowing your life to represent Christ in spite of what you see. Amen. So um, indeed, it is indeed um, a walk that you have to condition and yourself to to fulfill to to go ahead, and you have to ensure that the Lord has called you in that in that in that regard because going without the leading of god you're actually setting up yourself you know for failure actually setting up Absolutely. yourself you know to walk in error and you know you made so much um mention tonight i i there's a lot that you said it was a mouthful it was indeed a feast um i really did enjoy the teaching tonight and i just want to really thank you woman of god i believe that every leader should listen to this teaching i believe that every leader should you know um you know, take a page from 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 this. As Prophet mentioned last week, you need to start putting a book together, at least or a manual that can able to help um church leaders, persons, um any any leader um you know because I'm a, I'm not just a leader at church and I'm looking at it in all ways. I'm a leader in the secular field as well, and you know, no matter as long as you're a child of God, no matter what leadership capacity or role that you fit in, you still have to display you know, godly characteristics. And that in itself is, you know, it, 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 it was indeed fulfilling. And I just want to thank you for that, woman of God. I just want to, you know, bless God for you and, you know, just continue to seek the face of God and allow him to just expand what he has started in you. Amen. So Amen. I just wanted to make that contribution to you, woman of God. God bless you richly. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Now, before you go, prophetess, I want to use you as a model of leadership. I learned of your story when we met, good? And um, you spoke of um, privately and publicly um, about your, the way God has trained you, the way God has dealt with you as an individual. Now I will pinpoint the last seven years. I'm going to pinpoint those years. During those years, and of course you have been serving long before that, you know, you have always been serving and serving leaders and ministries. But during those last seven years, though you knew that there was more to you as a person in Christ, though you knew that there was greatness on your life and it's as if that, um, that knowledge of who you were was um, fighting you on the inside because there is this great woman that wants to explode, but there is this barrier that is keeping her in and also this the, the 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 way God has <laughs> positioned you to serve became also another barrier to keep you in. And those seven years, you functioned as an usher, as an usher, doing all kinds of things as an usher, being embarrassed, being spoken down to, 
um, being treated as if you are nothing, um, lied upon, accused. Um, you know, there were good times, there were bad times, but uh, people don't think much of an usher. They don't think much of an usher. You come to church and you see an usher. Ah, usher. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> people don't think much about an usher. It's, right. it's just reality. It's just the truth. Somebody who directs people to their seat. That's all they see in their head. I can find my own seat. I don't need you. You're, you're, you're a waste of good resources in the church. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how some people think. I'm a pastor, so I know. You understand? So now, after seven years of going through that, we met by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We met first in spirit. Then we met physically. And having met you, is that, is that the correct word? My wife will say no. Not the right word. That's it. <laughs> having, <laughs> leave my English right now. I'm tired. Now, having <laughs> met, right? The Holy Spirit did something. And I want to point this out because I'm going somewhere. The Holy Spirit did something. He began to elevate you. And people might not understand this. And I'm using you as an example, not because I am sending any message anywhere, but your life is an example. And it's an example for people to see that the biblical pattern is still active. Good? God began to elevate you, not by your request, but by the prophetic revelation of God and by confirmation, both in the apostolic and the prophetic. Why would God elevate you into becoming a prophetess? Now, let's, let's look at this. The apostle, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the five, not in rank, but in order, okay? Now, you jumped from teacher, pastor, evangelist, to prophet in one shot. One elevation took you from teacher, pastor, evangelist, to prophet, to becoming second in order in the fivefold line. Now, don't think that that is a joke. Good? Don't think that that is a joke. Because in the natural scheme of things, you have to go through the ranks of church leadership to reach that level. Yet the Holy Spirit, through his instruction, said, I have called her to the prophetic office, elevator, appointer, releaser. That's the Holy Spirit saying that. Good. Why would God do such a thing? Why? And I want to point out something. I want to point out something. And here is a statement um, that I want to read for you. Ushers, where is it? Oh, Lord Jesus. Yes. Ushers are ambassadors, spiritual ambassadors for the local church. Okay? That's a statement. Um, uh, can't find the person who said it now. But a spiritual ambassador for the local church. Now, let's look at that. The most menial of tasks elevated you to a high office. Now, some people might, might will never want to serve as an usher because they don't see it as a gateway to elevation. And you were never serving because you wanted elevation. You were serving simply because you loved Jesus Christ and you wanted to serve. Yet the Lord saw your heart and mm -hmm. elevated you to where he wanted you to be. We can go to scriptures like 
I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, right? That's what the psalmist said, right? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. And there are ushers in the Old Testament, ushers in the New Testament, and you see how, how these guys operated. There were some no-nonsense people. But what I wanted to point out is this, that God took you as a servant after seven years and, and, and uh, having examined you and your service to him after seven years and raised you up into an office that he can trust you with mm -hmm. to now raise up others. That's a servant leader. Amen. Um, you know, as you were speaking, um, Prophet, um, I just wanted to add, though, um, you know, I endure in those seven years, I endure treatments and, you know, insults that the average person would not have even stayed to endure. And I only endure that because at the end of the day, anything that I do, I have to be led by the Spirit of God. I have to ensure that I don't walk out of alignment or out of timing. <clears throat> and I stayed and I served. And you're right, you know, the hard posture, I've always said that the hard condition, the hard posture is what's important in service. It's not serving to be seen. And as, you know, Dr. Nadine said, it's not serving to be known. It's not serving, serving you know, to promote self. Mm -hmm. but serving and you know i served and i served with class listen to me man of god i served with class mm -hmm. i never served you know feeling like i was an usher when you came into that building listen to me i was a dignitary at the door Absolutely. dressed to impress and mm -hmm. ensure that when you come in when you encounter me when you see me when you interact with me you felt the love of god coming from me you felt invited. You felt that you, you know, you have encountered somebody that, you know, God has called to do whatever it is that she's doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I never asked to be elevated. I, I, I know that, you know, I have been told all my life that, you know, God, the plans that God has for me. But, you know, in that process, in that time, you don't focus on that. You just focus on the moment. You just focus on what is it that God have set you to do. I mean, there are times when, you know, you think, God, there is more than this. You know, God, there is, I know there is more because, you know, you feel on the inside of you, you feel in your spirit that there is more. I mean, you can't just continue, you know, enduring this insult and this, you know, this harsh treatment forever. It, it has to have a purpose behind it. And, you know, when I met you, I remembered when I met you, I, and I can say, I can say it publicly, um, you know, there was an incident in my, in my walk where I was literally tied down to an altar and the intention for that, that, that process was that I would be subservient to my leader because my leader recognized the grace on my life and my leader wanted to entrap me. And that's just one of my testimony out of many. And, you know, one day, I mean, I, 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 I know that God will permit me to able to share and to help someone else who is going through that. You know, coming from a place of rejection, coming from a place of not knowing who you are in God, your self-identity being screwed, at the end, screwed, at the end of the day, um, you know, you, you accept that. You accept you accept those treatments, you accept it because you think that it is the right thing. You think that it's because of love because you haven't gotten it in that way. So you, 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 you misunderstand, you're misguided in your emotions, in your heart, in your, in your spirit. And you go along and you continue in that process, but not even knowing that you were tied down. And I remember when I met this man of God. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. God bless his heart. I remember when I met this man of God, the first thing I said, I am a friend invited me and I said, who is this man? And, you know, that's my first, I was like, who is this man? And instantly in my spirit, there was a connection. And he connected as well in his spirit. We both connected and we, we did not even know each other. We had never communicated, but we both felt that pull in our spirit. And I remembered, um, woman of God, 
that this man prayed for me. We had, you know, we had, we were on, it, on the platform and he prayed for me. And before he prayed for me, just by meeting him, that connection, that soul force, that altar that I was tied onto, was, it was broken. The, 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 the witchcraft, whatever you want to call it, listen to me, it was broken. And persons would never believe that I would leave that organization, never, ever, because of how deep <clears throat> I was rooted in this place. I mean, rooted deep, the face of the ministry. Everybody knows me connected to this ministry to the point where when I left, I mean, persons were called and asked me what happened, you know, did I travel? They could not believe because no one knew, no one knew what was going on behind the scenes because I carried it very well. I never, and one thing I've always learned is that you don't expose your leaders. Um, no matter what is that you're going through, you don't go public and just expose your leaders and wash your dirty laundry in front of everyone. And some people are known for mm -hmm. that. I'm not that kind of person. I'm one that, mm -hmm. you know, I believe that, you know, um, you cover, love covers in spite of how you uh -huh. feel. And, you know, I, I went through um, that process of fire to shape me into who I am today. I did not just evolve overnight. But, you know, when I connected Prophet Bernard, that altar was, it came on the great fire from the grace, the anointing that's flowing from this man of God. And I disconnected from that altar, not even having a relationship with Prophet Bernard, to be honest. I remember um, when that time came and I felt in my spirit that this was the time when I had to disconnect. I had to, I felt that leading, that, that, that prompting to disconnect. And when that time came, it was prophesied by the leader at the time that, you know, she see me going, you know, to great length and, and, and moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. But she didn't even understand that it was God was the one that was, you know, navigating that path for me and, mm -hmm. you know, connecting to him, you know, um, everything that happened so fast and everything happened in such a quick time that, I mean, I was blown away. It wasn't, I, I did not connect to him with, with that um, expectation, to be honest. I connected because I love what I heard coming from him. I, mm -hmm. I, I am a woman of the word and, you know, just knowing that he was a man of the word and he, he, he placed great emphasis on the word was what drew me initially to him. But, um, you know, so much happened by that, by that connection, to be honest. <laughs> so much happened, man of God, by that connection. And, you know, you found, I found God. It because is, I maybe if I did not meet him, I may be still stuck <laughs> in that place. Well, Amen. God. Being yeah. a classy uh, no, usher. Yeah. Yeah. The classy <laughs> usher. You know, and I, I brought it up because there are people who... They, they, they know within themselves they are called to greatness, but greatness does not come by being great. Greatness comes by being humble, by Amen. service, Amen. by giving of yourself, by giving I time. Least and and that. We, we all have examples in our own life of how we have served and when you see God blessing leaders, and I'm not talking about those charlatans out there because you have a lot of them. Amen. But I'm talking about genuine men of God, women of God, who have labored, suffered, served um, the, in, in the kingdom without being seen, without having a name, you know, just, just, just being a Christian. Amen. <laughs> right? When you see God blessing them, it's not because somebody prayed one prayer over their head today. It's because they have a record. A record like um, that, that um, centurion leader. You understand? A record. And heaven takes note of the record. God trusts his greatest office with his most humble of servants. He does not give great power to people who, whose character and behavior and attitude is one of lordship and manipulation and those things. We have to ask the question, is what we are seeing the spirit of God 
we have to begin to ask some serious questions. Uh -huh. Is that the spirit of God? Can that be the spirit of God? And the obvious answer to that is no. It is a flat out no. And so I, I, I want to encourage those of you out there who might be serving um, in church, in the kingdom, in, you know, just in areas that one might consider as nothing. You might very well be the one that the Holy Spirit has his eyes on. Yes? To raise you up to, to great levels of leadership positions in the kingdom. So don't you ever think that you are nothing. So don't you ever think that. Some people will think nothing of you. Honestly speaking, they will never see you. But keep doing what you are doing. At some point in time, before you know it, the Lord will call for you. Lift you up and anoint you. Don't forget, it is God who anoints. When the anointing comes on a man, he becomes a different individual. Uh -huh. Yes? So whether or not you, you were schooled in Bible school, yea or nay, when that anointing comes on you, believe you me, you will spell right. You will construct your sentences right. Amen. You will preach right having never read. Come on. All you need to do is have the posture and the heart of a servant. That's all. So that's all. That is looking for. That's what he's Amen. looking for. If you if you have not heard anything Dr. Thomas said in these four weeks, remember that one state statement. All he's looking for is for somebody who have the heart and the posture of a servant. That's all. Prophet, as you were saying that, I, you know, before the seven years, I served 10 years as head of hospitality. <laughs> I served leaders who were coming in from the different districts as coming from the Pawi, you know, mm -hmm. um, background. I served leaders who were coming from, you know, different districts, ensuring that they were settled in their hotels, that they had food to eat, and, you know, stuff like that. So I have served leaders for so long to the point where my heart is just one to help, to just help. I just want to see someone be comfortable and do what God has called them to do and to help raise them, to help build them. And that has been my heart posture, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know what that hurts, man of God and woman of God, what that hurts the most is when you come from that background and you really want to see persons rise up in their calling, in their grace, and you try to help. And then people turn around and they get jealous or they covet the grace on your life, or they disrespect and disregard you as what God has called you. That is what hurts because at the end of the day, your heart is not one to try to lord over anyone. Your heart is to serve and to help and to develop. But then because of insecurities, because of person's foundational issues, they use that as, you know, they don't deal with that <clears throat> aspect of it. And they turn on you and they, they become jealous. They become covered, you know, they, they covered you and they, you know, they act funny around you and, and they, they, and people forget that sometimes as a prophet, you see, and man of God, you can, you know, as a prophet, you see, and you discern. <laughs> and sometimes as, as, as you say, woman of God, I was saying, you know, as a, a child of God, as a servant of God first, one of the things that you have to do is just remain humble because trust me, some. Sometimes you really want to call out some people and call out some things, but because of the love of God, because you have to submit to God and because you have to just, you know, remain at that place, you know, where God is pleased, you have to sometimes swallow your tongue, mm -hmm. you know, and just, and just love, yes. but you know, this and is some of the downsides to it. If, if you don't know the scriptures, one would not know that serving in hospitality and ushering are the preparation grounds for the prophet yeah. wait until you do that teaching <laughs> serving in hospitality Amen. and ushering is the preparation ground for the prophet you understand so some hmm. people want to be prophets but they don't want to be hospitable you know one of the worst things 
I, I hope I hope you guys are awake and hearing me. One of the worst things that we can find today is a prophet who has absolutely no ounce of hospitality inside of him. None. And it, and it is displayed in the way that he treats the people of God by the okay. prophets, by, by the way he prophesies. Yeah? yeah? The way yeah. he treats God's people by the little knowledge God is giving to them about an individual. Come on. Yes? There's, there's no compassion, no heart of love, no, for, they, they forget that this is a soul that they are they, they behave like his animals that they are that they are that they are ministering to, right? Yet yeah. hospitality. Come on, ask Elisha. He served Elijah. He was known as the man who washed Elisha's hand, right? Ushering, right? These 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 departments are the prophetic. But anyway, thank you, daughter Amen. of God, for allowing me to use yeah. you tonight by the grace of God. God's blessing. Hallelujah. I used you. Amen. Now I will use myself. Many years ago, <laughs> for five years, five years, just sitting down, listening to my bishop teach. And when he's finished teaching, I, I, I told you guys, when I reach Kansan Spring to go home at 11 o'clock, that one requires faith and the mercies of God. Because the last bus, the last proper bus is at 7 p.m. Between 7 and 8. Anything after that, you understand, is grace and mercy will carry you through. Yeah, yes? And I going behind God. Where I live was back of God. So you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> you can understand. That, you know, but those years were what God was using to give me wisdom, grace to teach, so that it can flow out of me naturally. No, no, I served for that kind of thing. Yes? So, you know, let us not think that things, anointing is not cheap. Anointing is not cheap. Gifts come easy. Let me say it again. Gifts come easy mm, we can lay hands on you and you get a gift immediately lay hands on you you start rubber shattering everybody you start speaking in tongues and prophesying gift but anointing that is not cheap you have to pay for that you go have to pay for it with a life of service and you maintain it by continuing to serve. <clears throat> so let us not let us not think that you know some things in the kingdom because some people parade it in a particular way. They make it look as if you know it's cheap. No. Servanthood is really the way. The litmus test that God uses to elevate people in the kingdom. Amen. Now, I have anybody else want to make any statement, any comment? Whilst um, you're raising your hand, I have one question for um, this woman of God. Um, where is my question now? When should the church decide to appoint one to leadership? When? And I have two scenarios here. Is it when the character and qualities of a leader are fully formed in that individual? Or do we see the potential in the person and then appoint them and hope that the characters and qualities will get into them? <laughs> when, when, help me. I wouldn't go so far as to hope that they, yeah. the qualities and characters will fully form. It's more than hope. But if you are to wait for someone to, you know, begin to fully exhibit characteristics of leadership, um, then you won't have leaders. Mm -hmm. It is in, because, you know, and, and, and you've heard it, and, and I'm sure you've experienced it you never fully 
learn anything, any discipline until you begin to do it, to live it. I mean, I thought I was the best driving student Mr. Sangster ever had. Hmm. Until I had to sit around a steering wheel by myself alone in the car. I thought I was the best. I mean, my, my GPA showed it that I was the best in my class in graduate school and in business, in management. But it is until I had to use what I learned, that's when I really began to learn what I learned in school. So you can't just, you know, wait. If you're going to sit and wait for somebody to learn leadership or, you know, to start exhibiting all the characteristics of leadership, that's not going to happen until you put that person in. But please don't hope that the potential will come out, but see that it will. Mm. See that it will. You're, you're able to, to foretell, you're able to discern, you're able to, you may not be a prophet, but there is something within him, something within you that sees that this person is teachable. Yes. This person is um is is humble. This person is willing to learn. And then then that's that's um that's when you put that you appoint that person to leadership. So it's a matter of hoping, because your hope will may never be fulfilled, it may be disappointed. <laughs> Yes. But when you can, when you can um, foresee, then that's when you put that person into leadership. So that's the money. best place for him to learn and to right. really develop his leadership skills. Right. So it is my responsibility as a leader to be able to discern um, the people in front of me, number one. And then having appointed them by the leading of the spirit, of course, it is also my responsibility to help them develop. Jesus saw leadership in all of his disciples. Mm. What we saw was an uneducated fisherman, my yes. friend Peter. Mm -hmm. What we saw were fishermen and, and, and a, and a a thief in tax collector and yes. and you know those are what we saw but jesus saw more than that he saw apostles he yes. saw great emissaries of the the, the 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 gospel of salvation he saw people that he could duplicate himself into and that's what we need to look for as leaders it is not our children it is not people who come with our with their big degrees or people, or even someone who comes with their 10, 15, 25 years of experience as a, as, as a leader. Mm -hmm. It is that person that you can see by the spirit of God that this person will make an effective leader in this capacity. Yes. Wow. That's that's amazing. That's that's amazing. This is this is amazing. Wow. And that's that's I think that's one of the great handicaps of the church today. Mm -hmm. is how we choose our leaders yeah because that, that goes against what what you have just said really goes against what is happening exactly it's like swimming up the stream rather than swimming down it you know it, and that's this one is of the difference. greatest handicap of the church how yeah. we choose our leaders and um is and not only choosing our leaders but placing our leaders why did jesus choose those three mm -hmm. that's an assignment for you prophet bernard yes well, I, 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 well, we were having a discussion this afternoon, somebody and I, <laughs> as it relates to Judas and his position. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just some one of the disciples. Judas was actually up in rank, if you really look at where mm -hmm. he was um, and uh, where the seating positions of the disciples. You had John and on his left, mm -hmm. Judas on his right, Peter over on the other side of the table. You understand, and John and Judas were were sitting next to him at the last supper. So and and they sat in order of 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 rank and and, and prominence. So he wasn't just one of the disciples. So mm -hmm. you know, um, J Jesus knew what he was doing. He had his betrayer close to him. 
mighty God of Daniel, help us tonight. Hey, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, it is. Wow. It is. It is a sad thing, but I mean, mm -hmm. people are placed in leadership position in the churches. Yes, just wrongly placed. Yes. And that's that's what that's what causes problems. Okay. In leadership wow. and in growth. Now, if I don't have the qualities that you gave of a servant leader, that altruism, emotional persuasive, and organizational stewardship, um, if if I don't have those things, how can I develop those things in my life? Well. As a servant leader of Christ, I did say it, and mm -hmm. I'll say it again. If you don't have a servant heart that expresses and, and demonstrates and, and practices and lives altruism, healing, wisdom, persuasive mapping, ability to see the big picture, and stewardship, being responsible for those within and outside of your sphere of influence, Go back to the cross. Like I said, servants are born. Servant Robert Greenleaf said servant leadership heart is you're born with it. And so, we so know hold people on, like hold that. on, Dr. Thomas. You mean that when I was born again, I was born again with a servant heart? There you go. Ah, okay. So there it's not something go. I pick up along the way. It's, I was actually, it cannot I was be something born. you pick up along the way. Yes, what? You cannot pick up a servant heart along the way because it's 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 contrary to the human nature. We are not servants. We are very self-serving people, mm -hmm. human. Yes. I mean, create creatures, very self-serving. It's all about us, me, the I, the mm. iPhone, the iPad. The, I'm sorry. Yes. It's all about the I and the me and the self. That's how Absolutely. we are naturally. So mm -hmm. it is. It is, it is those rare people who are born to serve. Rare people who are born oh. to serve. There are some people who are just happy being a servant. I just want to be a house girl all the days of my life, serving a family. That's fine with me. I just want to serve. And that's, you know, they make that a career. And that's good. It's a servant. It's a heart. That's their heart. Yes. There are people who... um just don't want to serve anybody at all. But then when you meet Christ and you're born, it, what's the born again experience if not the heart? Yes. The born again experience is in the heart. So your heart must be changed once you're born again. And that's why I said, if as a pastor leader, you don't find that natural instinct to serve, go back to that cross and look at it again. Yes, well, this is this is deep as 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 simple as we are saying it. If if you are born again, and you don't have a desire to serve, go back to the cross. You were born, but not again. <laughs> go back to the cross. You were born somewhere, but not in Christ. <laughs> and and we we emphasize it's like the emphasis on the heart is no longer there, really and truly. And it's that's like we take up any old frog uh, that, that, that say they are a Christian and just accept their ribbit as if it is, you know, Christianity. Nah, this is, this is, this is serious. We, we really have to really begin to examine what we are putting forward as leaders and go back into examining people's hearts and offend people to reveal their hearts because we mm -hmm. really want to know what <laughs> people are. We would deliberately offend them mm -hmm. so we can reveal their hearts before we, 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 we put them into leadership. Let's offend them seriously so that we can see what comes out of this frog when I step on it. When I step on it. Eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we really have to do that. Yeah, and, and offending them doesn't have to mean, you know, being rude or nasty to no, them. No, 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 no. It's just offending them with your righteousness. Because exactly. if my righteousness offends you, mm -hmm. then that's that's where I start with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, bringing them to light with the word and their actions. And let, let's see how they react. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there are some of us, you see, we have made mistakes in um, appointing, recommending, elevating people into leadership. And when we look back, we still cringe on, you know, these, these mistakes that we have made. Um, maybe we never know better, or maybe we just ignored the signs that um that were there but having having looked at this now it's it it becomes much more difficult having heard this teaching to just be quick to recommend a point and elevate honestly speaking it becomes a bit more difficult because you are <clears throat> Looking for so much more now. Mm -hmm. You're looking for so much more because a person that is going into leadership is not somebody who has just started to serve. It is somebody who has been serving and had that lifestyle of doing that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that's that's where a lot of us have gone wrong in that we have not looked for a record of service in these people and if they were serving who were they serving was their service unto self or was it truly unto god by meeting the needs of men right yeah. because I, I could start calling names and, and 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 stuff like that and no but leave that alone we, i really have to go back to the drawing board and say look this person that I have my eyes on to be a leader. No, I'm going to have to wait and exercise great patience before you'll be quick because you, you put a, a mantle of power on somebody. And before you know it, the person that you elevated think that they're higher than you. <laughs> you know, they begin to behave like they were the ones who elevated you rather than you being the one to recommend and stand watch at their elevation so this this whole thing about servant leadership is so serious that we have to go back to the drawing board as leaders and as children of god it is amen anybody yeah. else want to say anything tonight even if you want to tell dr nadine how pretty she is we we welcome it yes <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor Dan. Okay. Uh, it is not me personally who wants to say anything, but there is a question someone uh -huh. asks, and I think it is Grace who asks, what about people who who placed in who are placed in leadership position because of the offering <laughs> they give or is for financial status? This is a, a question or well. statement. Get ready for Jesus. That's all I have to say to that. <laughs> Jesus soon visit you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jesus soon visit Fear you. Fear God. Oh. Yeah. Fear God and live. That's all I have to Fear say to God. <laughs> because yeah, I'll but be... of course, that also is definitely a wrong placement. Of course. Um, there are so many dangers with that, though. Mm -hmm. Um, there are so many dangers with that. When you put somebody in a position of leadership because of, you know, they big, throw big tides, they give big offering, or, you know, they, they're rich. So, you know, that anything the church wants, they will say, oh, well, I'll take care of it. Those persons end up, are they're the ones who run the church. Mm -hmm. They tell the pastor what to do, what not to do. They tell the pastor what to preach, what not to preach. They tell the pastor who to appoint, who to get rid of. Not that they hold, and, and sometimes they don't even hold the position. Um, officially, there might be an ex officio on everything because of yes. the money. Um, but so that's, that, that in itself is, is, um, is dangerous. But I'll tell you one thing, though. There are some people, there are some persons who will request that because I'm giving this money, um, I'm, you know, helping in this way. I want to sit on the board. Mm 
And it's not always a bad thing if that person is being led by God. I'll give you an example. My alma mater, Oral Roberts University, was in a very bad state. They were actually closing their doors. They had started closing a lot of courses, a lot of schools. They gave away Oral Roberts' heart. They gave away the medical school, which was the which was how Oral Roberts University started. It was a medical school. They gave away that, sold the medical school. They sold the legal, um, the law school. They were selling off the schools like that because they were about to close. And one man stepped in. That man was the owner of a hobby store. He sold craft items. And he said he could not understand why he was making that kind of money selling craft items. And God said to him, do not touch that money. You will live normally. Millions. And then one day he was watching the news that Oral Roberts was about to close. And God said to him, there you go. Oral Roberts had just died like a year after Oral Roberts died. No, a few years after Oral Roberts died. Yeah. And um, he said, God said, that's why you, you have that money. Go do what I tell you to do. So the first deposit was 60 million US dollars. Yes, Papa. By the, time, said my donors. <laughs> by the time mm -hmm. I left, he had given um, close to 200 million US dollars to oh, all university. Got it back on its feet. It's now sailing, soaring. My daughter just graduated there last year. Listen. So here was this man, and the only condition that he gave was that I'm going to be the chairman of that board. Yes. And under his leadership, Oral Roberts University turned around. My daughter got a wonderful scholarship from there because I went, I mean, I went there. She got another scholarship because I went. So it's, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to show you from where, you know, got his money. The, that money from Mr. Green came, took it to, from this down there to that level. And all he wanted was to be chair on the board. And under his guidance, it turned everything around. So, you know, I mean, appointing someone as, you know, into leadership because of money is not necessarily in an, a bad thing, but it must be led by the spirit of God. You must have that Absolutely. discernment to know if this man is here to manipulate or to be used or yeah, man, man, woman is here to manipulate or to be used by God. Yes. If something inside of your little heart each and say, mm -mm, Bernard run, run, I beg you, because yes. then it gonna stop being Bernard, um, prophet Bernard ministry. It gonna start be rich man ministry. Mm -hmm. And you just you're doing what you're doing. But if you know that God is saying, receive this man, and this man is willing to humble himself under your leadership, or you know, you, is willing to allow God to lead him as he leads or as he directs you as the leader, then you have a beautiful relationship right there. Yeah, absolutely. And and that that's a that's a very um modern day example. And there, there's another example I could give that went on the opposite end. Mm -hmm. um, but that's too fresh to say it no but it, it does happen right where most of, yeah most of those hostage. and that's why i said be yeah. very careful because most careful. times mm -hmm. it's about manipulation and destruction yeah ministries are a last stage like that so um, somebody mentioned you know appointment based on their level of education again the principle same difference still, you know holds the same um as in as in that regard amen any other okay. questions um, yes, Prophet. Um, while um, Reverend Dr. Nadine was looking at the merit in one entering financially to assist and elevate a, a dying institution, I know of, uh, well, you said there is a middle, well, a recent situation, which is the opposite of what has happened. I can give an incident of an in-between incident, actually, the two mm -hmm. extremes and the one in between, mm -hmm. where the church, it was not really a church, but it, I can say it's a church, a tent gathering, because <laughs> it was a tent they built, and there were outsiders who came in, 
and persons were, it started with people being given seats to the very forefront of the tent. Oh, and oh. Uh, depending on your sitting position, you oh, paid oh. a particular amount, which started for as much as probably a thousand. And the least um, amount you contribute to the tent movement, you will face further in the outer court of the tent. Yes, and Jesus. persons... <laughs> And persons who were seated to the forefront of the tent eventually became leaders of that tent assembly to the point that an individual or persons within the forefront don donors of the tent who eventually became leaders when the tent broke away became leaders in other organizations and had that same tent position financing um, mentality, if that's not a tongue twister, and started doing some erroneous things with the church finances because of what they had learned from yeah. where they were. And I, they were actually put in positions of authority or leadership because it was felt that because of what they had acquired, which was very wrong, nothing to do with God, gave them a boost and gave yeah. them the authority in handling that which could not have been handled properly when they were following the tent. So there, you see, this is a lot. So there is, um, for leaders, <laughs> there is a, a lesson to be learned right there. Prophet, did I lose you along the way? No, no I am just awestruck. <laughs> I'm still Sorry? stuck on the tent, just trying to see the seats. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm just awestruck. And I wondering where I would fall. sit. And boy, I'm oh, I would, you would not have sat. You probably would have stood probably outside. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is a real because... story. You're not making this up. Prophet, am I in the business of making up stories? No, no, I'm, I'm I know you're not, but <laughs> Jesus have mercy. It is this true. This is prophet. serious. Yes, it is true. Oh wow. Yes. This and is a new the, level. I will add to yes. the persons who came, they were they were foreigners to the land. And so they erected their tents. Yes. And it turned out that they were posing as men and women of God, but indeed, they were not. Absolutely. Okay, so even in that, people have to be careful because many times there yeah. is a new movement and that new movement mm -hmm. will sell itself as leading leaders to help elevate mm -hmm. you know, that movement, whereas their agenda is what really and truly really to take people to hell and to rip, rid mm -hmm. them of their resources. So mm -hmm. we have to be careful first, even to whom, you know, the, the ministry will be opened to. As leaders, you don't just yeah. open your, your church to anyone and say, come in and, yeah. you know, have your stuff done. Yeah. Because before you know it, both your ministry and your resources will be ruined, yeah. you know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's just an obs observation. Yeah. The, 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 I, I have a story that I know of. Um, that happened in one of these small islands. I actually met the the bishop guy. Um, his his operation is to go around find churches that are struggling. Um, and when we say struggling, financially struggling, whether can't build a building, can't um have a building and can't finish it, or have a plot of land and can't build. You know, these are the kind of people. And he goes around and then he. He offers help to these people. But then in offering the help, he positions himself as the bishop and then he takes the land, the building from the people. And then once he takes it, then he now moves in to unseat the leader of that place or the founder or the owner of that ministry. Right, and that's how he he um he establishes himself as a bishop. You understand? Um, and I had to I had to um God had God used me to protect a particular pastor in Jamaica from him. You understand? Um, it, it so happened that I went to the church to preach, and I wasn't supposed to go back. And God said, "Go back this Sunday," and I went back that Sunday. And lo and behold, that's the man I encountered. 
and he never liked prophets nor believed in prophets. You understand? And he preached a message about, you know, mocking the prophetic while I was there. And <laughs> I said, no worries. God is going to deal with his case today and, and embarrass him. And so said, so done. God embarrassed him and, you know, uprooted him from, the, um, from this place. You see, so th there are so many stories out there. And <clears throat> having been taught tonight about servant leadership, we are able to identify what is right, what is wrong, and call a spear a spear. Don't look at a spear and call it a spear. If the thing is a spear, it's a spear. Right? Don't try pretty it up. Don't try sugarcoat it. Call it for what it is so that we can protect ourselves from the wiles of the devil because he's cunning and he's crafty. Amen? Yes. Why, well, Pastor Diana, I'm going to have to talk to you secretly about that case there, boy. That's a, that's a study case. Yes? Yeah. It is. <laughs> that's a study but case. Your, your example is also a study case. Yes. You know, that's that's a business maneuver. You know that. Yes, that's, it is. I mean, doing mm -hmm. that, that's, I mean, oh. mm -hmm. that's sad. That's it's very sad. It's a maneuver, you know, and well, we'll talk privately about that because there are some things I can't mention publicly about. Yeah, you know, that's, that that's sad. Yeah. yeah. Sister Sandy, Evangelist Sandy, go ahead, please. Prophet, before you... Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. Yes, sorry. Sorry about that, Sister Sandy. You're coming back on. I was about to interject just to say that um, a good um, place to start based on everything that has been taught for the past few weeks mm -hmm. when it comes to servant leadership. If the person whom you have decided to follow is not displaying or, or demonstrate any level of a servant leadership and the person seems to, you know, manipulate, I, you may need to have the ability to discern it. This is a clear sign that you are not under the right leadership, okay? And and based on what has been taught, it would be um, to your advantage also to take down some key points, register those that you could use as benchmarks when you're looking at leaders and mm -hmm. see whether or not what you have learned, this person is displaying it or is far from it. And mm -hmm. ask yourself the questions that are daring and do what is necessary to safeguard yourself. Because at the end of the day, the servant and the whom you are going to be led will either lead you to or away from Christ. And the onus is on you to be led to and not from Christ. And that you do not become so loyal to such a servant who is leading you away from Christ that you cannot pull away because of false um, loyalty to that servant so uh -huh. the teachings in my opinion they are not just words or just mere listening or taking in what has been said but they are very practical and life-saving as well for our own salvation so i think these were very important teachings for the past few, Amen. few weeks Amen. yeah Amen. i needed Amen. to so say much. that i agree with you on yes that. thank you um please remember to fill out the form uh, our survey <clears> form <throat> and give us your feedback. Evangelist Sandy, please go ahead. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, again, Prophet. Thank you for inviting this beautiful God to many. Renati, we thank you. And um, thank you for your teaching tonight. Does you know open my eyes and um let me understand more to when I um just get saved. I remember when I just get saved, I have this desire to I wasn't working at the time, but I remember I went to church. This church I to when I moved from the country. Video, to so your bandwidth is is better. We're not hearing you clearly. Turn off your video. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hearing me now? Yes. Okay. So when I when I moved from the country to Runaway Bay, 
to live, I started attending this church. So I've been to the church like two Sundays and um, I noticed the church wasn't cleaned. And I was like, I can't put on my clothes and come to church nicely and to sit in the church and not clean. And, um, you know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit come on people, they will drop on the floor. And I'm like, I ain't drop on this floor and mess up my clothes. So I'm home and I say, you know what? I'm going to take it up as my duty to go and clean church every Saturday night. Make sure the church is clean for Sunday. So I went and I started. I asked them, who is the person I clean the church? They would say that they have this lady that they pay once a month to clean the church. I said, okay, I'm going to come every Saturday and clean the church. You have to pay me. I'm going to make that be my duty to make sure the the house is clean for service because I don't like to come on Sunday morning and say the church is, you know, messy because if I come and the church is not clean. So I started taking it up sometimes and Saturday cleaning. I don't know if you know, um, Salem New Testament Church and Basilium. This is a big church. Sometime I went there like three o'clock in the evening and at six o'clock at night, I'm just going home. It's me alone, and I'm, you know, being clean in the church. I don't have a problem. I just enjoy doing it and feeling that that's, I'm not working, so that's my job. I take that as my job. I remember when the church here closed, um, they selecting persons in position. They select me to be assistant secretary for family life ministry. And so when I was there, this member there at the church, she was there like 10 years and she was upset and she's like, you just come to church and they give you position and I'm here a long time and they don't give me anything to do. I said, I didn't ask for anything. I just come here and make myself available, do what I have to do. Shortly after that, the Lord opened the door for me in a Montego Bay. So I was working at Iberia Star doing hospitality. So I do it there for a while. And then the Lord opened the door for me to come here and the work program doing the same thing. I didn't know what the Lord was doing with me. I just have a desire to do what the Lord lay in my heart to do. And so when I came here, I didn't have a church to go. So I find this lady and start praying back home with in Jamaica until she started to tell persons about it. And it's end up that way. I have one of those conference line that you do prayer line. And um, it was like something like 80 something persons. And I did it for eight years. This pastor invited another pastor to it. And he said to me that, I'm going to ordain you. Anytime you come to the meeting, I'm going to ordain you. Like, ordain me? I just said, oh, okay. I did it in mind. And so I I come to make 2020, I see it happen. It's just like, you know, open my eyes to the teaching. I didn't, up to now, I'm like, I always been praying and say, Lord, I want to be an intercessor. That's what I always tell in the Lord. I want to be an intercessor. I want to travel about and do ministry. I want to be an intercessor. That what, So, you know, just, just to see the desire and my art and the teaching where the Lord is taking me. I'm just, thank you. I just want to say thanks. And thanks to you, Prophet Bernard. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing the way God has caused us to meet, you know, some of us, how we have met. And um, I know I, I was at your ordination. Um, you know, I, I was just following the bishop and happened to be at your ordination. I never knew that I would have become, so, you know, someone that God would have used to be imparting into your life. We, we, we never know that. We just follow the bishop, go on ordination, cause him said, come. <laughs> you see, see, you see how God works, right? <laughs> just, just by obeying the bishop and, and going with him, this relationship was fostered, not because I wanted it, but because this is what God wanted. And having after doing what you're doing for eight years, God said, okay, take a break from doing that now. Come now learn some new things because he's going to launch you out in a different way right it's not that you 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 have been retired by god 
No, you are you are being retooled, right? And and sometimes leaders don't even understand that dynamic as well. That sometimes God will put you on a break, not because you did something bad or you did um you know you're the worst kind of servant out there, but He, he just wants you to be retooled to go back out there to do what he wants in a greater, more mature, wiser way, right? So as, as leaders, again, this is an example, right? This is an example of yeah. what, you know, God, God is doing in, in our life. And right here in Glory Room is filled with leaders, filled with yeah. leaders of, of ministries, right? Some of you are on a break. I don't even know why you're on a break because God is retooling mm -hmm. you. You understand? He's retooling you and he's going to sh shoot you back out there for you to do what he wants. Who to tell? You might very well be the ones that God will use to plant the churches. Uh, let me keep my mouth shut. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's, that's a remarkable journey, um, Sister Sandy. Yes. And, and you have to see it, you know, for, for, for what it is. You are in my front yard in Runaway Bay, cleaning church. Um, um, cleaning the church, you alone, and I know that church. I passed by there, I used to pass by there for 20 odd years. <laughs> um, so, um, it's, it's not a small building, it's not small, it's some really good distance to cover. And you alone cleaned, and from that, God elevated you to secretary of a ministry within the church committed wow. obviously in a committed mm -hmm. office because yes. you know you were you were challenged your appointment was challenged um, and then from there he gave you a paying job so all this time you were working for free i i don't i don't know how many times were you ever thanked privately or publicly for what you do <laughs> but there it is from that god brought you to that place he put things in you he brought things out of you that made you go into a job where you were paid to do what you were doing in his house basically taking care of his house taking care of his people making them comfortable mm -hmm. and then here we are mm -hmm. look at god so, yeah. I mean, that's it. It's the servant heart that he looks at. Mm -hmm. And it's from there that he begins to build. He removes what needs to be removed. He puts what needs to be put in. And then he puts us where he wants us to be. Yeah. It's still a journey. Like I said, it's easier to learn to be a leader than it is to be a servant. <laughs> it's a journey. That in itself is a journey. But what, keep well, on working. Prophet has not been, a, at least you were thanked. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah at least at least you were thanked <laughs> and she had the opportunity to dress yes. to impress <laughs> you know is what is she while doing she it was taken to a back office to say thank you but at least you were you were you were told thank sure. you yeah. yeah some of us weren't told thank you <laughs> you understand a lot of us weren't told thank you <laughs> so, and we weren't and we weren't cleaning no, we weren't cleaning the floor. <laughs> uh -oh. I was still weren't told thank you. So oh, you no, know, it, it's, it's reached to a point. It's reached to a point when um when um they raised the rent on me and I couldn't pay rent and I decided to move closer to IBU stars to um, um Montego Bay, mm -hmm. and I was telling them that the landlord raised the rent and um I came pay it and the secretary let me know that. I said, when I move close to my job traveling, she let me know that I'm going closer to my job and far from God. I said, okay. I said, okay. Because mm. God is not only him in, in that church. <laughs> that God is not only in that church. Yes, hmm. yes. Wow. Now to see when I come back in 2020 and I visited them, when they, when they give me a ride to church, I said, good night. And she said, um, when we reach the church, I'll tell you good night. When I reached the church and come out of the car, she looked at me and from my head to my toe and she said, oh, you're still a Christian. Good night, Sister Sandy. I'm like, Jesus. Really? This is another level. I said, okay. 
Yes, boy. This gone up and down and down from each year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you thought I've heard it all. <laughs> no, it keeps getting better. Ooh. When I reach church, I tell you good night. <laughs> Almighty God. Mm. Prince of God. Oh my God. We could go on and on tonight. But servant, we have stories, we have stories to tell. And you have stories to tell and you have books to write. Your life mm. is a journey. Mm. It's a journey of service and servanthood. You know, one of the one of the things that is, is has been on my heart, and maybe some of you might not have thought about this, and I'm just throwing it out there. You know, there are a lot of people, um, elderly people, who are in golden age homes, retirement homes, um, and they don't have anybody. Children come and just dump them. Just leave them there and forget about them. And they really don't have anybody to talk to. They don't have anybody to say, you know, I love you. Or even to, to just encourage them. Because they are people too. You understand? And you might, you, might, you might have a desire to do that kind of service. You know, go and find them. You understand? And, and, and give your time, give an hour, you know, just to say thank you to these, some of these people who have served. I mean, I went to an organization and I saw people there that served Jamaica in some great capacities. And when I ask, where are their families? Why are they here? And I'm talking about people who used to work in politics, political offices. As, as secretaries, teachers. And I'm like, where are their families? They have helped so Say, no, they say, pastor, they just come and the children just bring them here, leave them, turn their backs and never return. And you look at these, you look at these elderly people and you see sorrow of heart. Mm -hmm. Just wanting somebody to just come and say, you know, God is good. Just even that, God is good. We love you. Eh? Happy birthday, eh? so that they feel like somebody. Listen, there's so much that God wants us and can have us do. Don't you ever think you are not useful in the kingdom of God? Never think so. Hmm? If you want to know the metal of a man, and this is my final comment on, on some of you who want to know if somebody is really called to leadership. Here are two things I'm going to recommend to you. Number one, put them to serve in a golden age home. <laughs> put them to serve elderly people. Number one. And number two, put them to serve children. Those two. And when they have mastered that, let them serve teenagers. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and then you will know is this person truly called to servant leadership hmm? first place the golden age woman second place children third place teenagers hmm? test them test them and you will see Dr. Nadine this is where we close tonight Thank you so much for being 